We want to warn you that some viewers will find some of this next video disturbing. As BP prepares for the final kill, the focus will shift entirely to cleanup and recovery. How badly are the Gulf and the Marsh injured in the long term? On Barataria Bay in Plaquemines Parish, a potential victim is spotted. You got a bucket or something or a bag, cricket, we can put this in. It turns out to be a highly endangered Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. Did you get the GPS? Yeah, I got it. The dead turtle will be tested. The evidence only circumstantial. But Plaquemines Coastal Director P.J. Hahn naturally suspects BP. Well, we've gotten a lot through here. This is where all the oil started. And oil is showing up in some unexpected ways. We want to go in right over in that white, that white beach area right there. On a barrier island over the weekend, a team of divers spotted oil oozing from underground. We're walking the shorelines, and so we have GPS tracks which show exactly the new high water line. Dr. Ed Owens is a contractor advising BP on cleanup. We're very familiar with this area. We've been in and out of this area probably three or four times in, in, in the past few weeks. And the guy stepped down on the hole and oil just starts squirting down. The no-name island was right in the path of some of the heaviest oil, which may explain why the oil is now gurgling to the top. You press down. And that's a, that's a crab hole. Yeah, crab hole full of oil. Nature intended the barrier islands to move one grain of sand at a time. Not exactly terra firma, those sands are in some cases piling up on top of oil. And depending on the wave conditions, it can either be eroded out of that beach or out of that wetland, or it can be buried in some cases. BP says five or six teams of inspectors work virtually every day looking for just such events. In an area like that, we dig pits, we dig trenches. We look for subsurface oil. At the moment, this looks like a dipstick full of fresh BP oil. Scientists will tell you that there is no body of water anywhere on the planet with an ecology better suited to break down oil than the Gulf of Mexico. There is simply no way anyone can tell how long this will last. And it raises a red flag at the height of hurricane season. It's going to wash this area away, and this area, then we're going to be fighting the oil again. Oh, sure. Should anybody be concerned? that right. there will be this remnant oil years and years into the future and there's no way to know it's there or nobody's looking for it. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite understandable that people will be concerned that there might be long-term persisting oil uh, from this event. That's very unlikely. Unlike Alaska, scientists say, where two months ago charter boat captain Dave Jenko showed Fox 8 Exxon Valdez oil from 1989. Looking pretty normal and clean on the very surface, but scrape it black, and there's, the, there's that layer. The heat and humidity of South Louisiana theoretically should break down the oil much faster than Alaska's deep freeze. On the north side of the island, P.J. Hahn makes a possibly even more ominous discovery. On the water bottom, so we're not digging nearly as deep now as what we've, did, as what we've dug over there. BP concedes that poses trickier cleanup issues. Uh, those back bay areas have to be treated much more carefully. The, the sediments are much finer. They're, they're wet areas. Uh, we don't want to release oil that could uh, have wildlife contact in the area. Cleaning the back bays requires manual labor and encircling the area with boom to keep the oil contained. On the edges of the marsh, BP contractors are vacuuming oil, but they stay out of the vegetation. In the wetlands, it, it, it's, uh, it's sometimes preferable to let the natural weathering take place. There is nonetheless some collateral damage. A couple hundred yards along Wilkinson Canal, used as a staging area, may be sacrificed. You can see they kept running their airboats here in the evening and pretty much trampled the marsh out here. P.J. Hahn figures by next year, with the grasses now dead, that section of marsh will melt into the bay. Along the way, there are some victories. It feels good to come out here and see all these young birds with no oil on them. Like these young pelicans, ironically, perched on boom. On May 22nd, they were young hatchlings or still in their eggs when that same island got socked by oil. Within hours, wildlife and fisheries had boom in place, but many of the early images of oiled pelicans came from this site. There is no way to know how many young or old pelicans died. Right now, they don't want to disturb some of the nesting birds that are in there. In the early days, 
uh, would you ever have expected to see Never. This? I thought we were going to lose this island and all the birds on it. When we first came out here, this whole area was covered in oil. Oil was getting on onto the beach and to this little island. From a distance, anyway, the island and the birds look to have weathered these last few months. So far. One of the few success stories, I think, that's come out of this oil spill. Plaquemines Parish President Billy Nungesser uh, tells Fox 8 that he's very concerned that they may not find large amounts of oil. He wants $200,000 from BP to study the islands and water bottoms. So far, no answers. So Nungesser says he'll ask the parish council for 100 grand next week.